Hello everybody and welcome, this is Spoonie with another shipbuilding tutorial for Starbase. In this video, we're going to go over the mining laser, take a quick look at what it does, how to build one, and how to set it up so it's easy to use. So to build the mining laser, you're going to need any hard point, a small turret base, a small turntable mount number two, the utility tool body, two utility tool and rail cannon capacitors, and a mining laser. So first we're going to place down our hard point, followed by our small turret base. Next we'll place down our small turntable mount number two on top of the turret base. The area which has these two prongs is the back. The area that has more of this little indented cradle exposed is the front. Next, we'll place our utility tool body into the mount. We'll add our capacitors into these two indents in the back. And then we'll connect our mining laser to the front. Select everything and then auto bolt it all together. Be sure that you've added cables to the bottom of this hard point so that it functions, and you're all set. So, once you've got your mining laser constructed, you'll want to set up a button so that you can turn it on or off easily. You can turn it on and off manually using your universal tool, but this can become tedious, and it's probably faster to use a pickaxe than getting out of your ship to turn on or off your mining laser every time. But just in case you do want to turn it on or off manually, or you've lost access to your button because it was destroyed for whatever reason, we'll enter test mode now, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll just look at the front of the mining laser and press U to open your universal tool. Under the name field mining laser on, or whatever you've named this to, you'll just change the value from zero to one. As you can see, that'll turn on the laser, changing it back to zero, we'll turn it back off. So first, we're going to want to name the laser something that's easy to remember. We're just going to name this laser. Next, we'll go to our button, and under button state, we will change this to laser as well. We want to make sure that our button on state value is 1, off state value is 0, and button style is set to 1. If it's set to zero, you'll have to hold down the button in order to use the mining laser. Now let's enter test mode to make sure it works. You can see when I press the button, the laser turns on. When I press it again, it turns off. And you'll notice that this does drain your batteries fairly rapidly. This ship only has five batteries and two tier one generators, and it can only run this laser for about 10 seconds. So if you've got multiple lasers or a larger ship that's also using some of the batteries, you're gonna wanna have at least 10 to 20, but more is always better. And in case you have multiple lasers, the process is the same. You'll just want to make sure that the mining lasers are all named the same thing. That way when you press the button, they all turn on or off. You can change the length of the beam. It is set to 10 by default, but it does go up to 20. As far as I know, the length of the beam does not determine how much energy is used. The reason you might want to have it set lower is because if you had these turntables turning towards one another, sweeping an asteroid, and they were to come into contact with your ship, they will damage it outside of the safe zone. So if you had the beams set up one across from one another, it would be a good idea to make sure that the length of the beams was short enough that it didn't come into contact with your ship. Now that we have our button set up, 
Let's also set up a lever so that we can easily rotate our turntables in case we need to rotate our lasers. First we'll need a lever. Just a regular lever will do. We'll place it down. Remember to bolt it. So once our lever is down, we'll select our small turret base. This will give us some options in the property box. We're going to focus on turret rotation. We're going to change this to turret R so that it's easier to work with. Next, we'll select our lever once again, and where it says lever state, we'll type in turret R. The minimum output and the maximum output will represent the angle of the small turret base. You can see the maximum rotation is 180 degrees, and the minimum rotation is negative 180 degrees. Its current state, where it's facing directly forward, is zero degrees. So for this turret, if we want it to be able to churn 45 degrees, we'll set the max output to 45. For this turret, we would set it to negative 45 if we wanted the two turrets to be able to converge and turn in towards one another. In order to have these two turrets act independently, we would need to set up a YOLO script that would tell this one to invert this value to a negative number. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Now let's jump into test mode to see if it works. As you can see, as I move the lever, our turret will rotate. And 45 degrees does seem to be enough that they don't come into contact. So finally, if we wanted to have our two turrets rotate in towards one another when we move this lever, instead of having two separate levers, what we can do is use YOLAL to tell this second turret to invert the position of the first. To do that, we're going to select our small turret base on the second turret. And instead of turret R, we're going to name this one turret R2. Next, we'll edit the script on our YOLAL chip to say colon, and it's very important to remember to put this colon because that's what tells YOLAL that this is a value that it needs to read. So colon turret R2 is equal to colon turret R multiplied by negative 1. So star negative 1. So this will basically read that the value of turret R2 should be equal to the value of turret R multiplied by negative 1. Next, we'll just type go to 1 so that it only reads this first line of script. Otherwise, it will read all of these empty lines of script before going back and updating the position, which would cause our second turret to lag behind the position of the first quite a bit. Now let's jump into test mode and try it out. As you can see, they do move in towards one another. <laughs> 